Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with part five of the Harem of Fifth series, The Three Ruffians. From the fourth degree, Secret Master Lecture. Question. What does a brother represent presenting a mark and receiving assistance? Answer. Our Grand Master, Hiram Abed, who was a poor man before his regular and upright deportment, his great skill in architecture and the sciences, became eminently distinguished among the craftsmen. Hiram the Builder is the profound symbol of manhood laboring for immortality and all the different points of the legend are simply clustered around it. Only to throw out the symbol in the bolder relief, the legend is of itself inert. It is the symbol of the master workman that gives it life and true meaning. King Hiram of Tyre, the descendant of Cain, who selected Hiram of Bith, the son of a widow, as all Freemasons are called because of the relation of their divine progenitor with Eve. The Masonic legend has points of variance from as well as agreement with the Bible story. It states that Jehovah created Eve, that the Lucifer spirit, Samuel, united with her, but that he was ousted by Jehovah and forced to leave her before the birth of her son Cain, who was, thus, the son of a widow. Then Jehovah created Adam to be the husband of Eve, and from their union, Abel, later known as sons of Seth, was born. Thus, from the beginning there have been two kinds of people in the world, one begotten by the Lucifer spirit Samuel, or sons of Cain, and partaking of a semi-divine nature imbued with the dynamic material energy inherited from this divine ancestry, is aggressive, progressive, and possessed of great initiative, but impatient of resistance or authority, whether human or divine. Hiram of Beth, being the son of a widow, Every master was the widow's son. He was the continuation of the master line that had apparently been broken with the death of the first grand master Hiram Abith. In the initiation drama, he had been assigned the role of Hiram Abith, whose mantle thus assumed became the central feature of the candidate's role in the secret society. In that same role, he would emulate Abith who had died rather than give up the secrets of the Master Mason. In that role, he would thwart the effects of the attack by the three assassins who had wanted those secrets badly enough to kill, not caring that the murder of Hiram Abith meant an end to the building of the unfinished temple. Before Hiram expired, he hid the hammer and disc upon which he had inscribed the word. This was never found until ages later when Hiram, the widow's son, was reborn as Lazarus and became the friend and pupil of the Lion of Judah who raised him from death through initiation. When the hammer was found it had the shape of a cross and the disc had became a rose. Therefore he took his place among the immortals under the symbolical name Christian Rosencruz. Now, accordingly to our ancient traditions, upon the slain Hiram's rod was the full name of deity, or perhaps the first and most important syllable. His rod was essential not only in forming the ineffable word, but in completing the right angle. Typhon, the queen of Ethiopia, and the 72 conspirators against Osiris represent the three destructive powers preserved to modern Freemasons as the murderers of the master builder. They are ignorance, superstition, and fear, or rather, the state, the church, and the mob, the destroyers of all good things. To the mystic Christian Mason, 
Chabram represents the Christ who in three days, four degrees, raised the temple of his body from its earthly sepulcher. His three murderers were Caesar's agent, being the state, the Sanhedrin being the church, and the incited populace being the mob. Hiram Abiff represents intelligence, liberty, and truth, and was struck down by a blow to the neck with a rule, representing the suppression of speech by the church. Then he was struck in the heart with the square, representing the suppression of belief by the state. And finally he was struck on the head by a mall, representing the suppression of intellect by the masses. Freemasonry thus equates the church, the state, and the masses with tyranny, intolerance, and ignorance. In his ancient Freemasonry, F.C. Higgins reproduces the Masonic apron of a colossal stone figure at Guadiwa, Guatemala. The central ornament of the apron is the three Persian nails, arranged exactly like the British broad arrow. That three nails should be used to crucify the Christ, three murderers to kill Chabram Abib, and three wounds to slay Prince Koha, the Mexican Indian Osiris, and John F. Kennedy, is significant. The interpretation is bore out in the highest degrees of sublime masonry. Thus, in the 32nd or degree of Prince of the Royal Secret, according to the Continental Nomenclature, the following allegories are explained. The symbolical mystery of the death of Hiram Abib represents that of the Messiah for the three blows which were given to him at the three gates of the temple allude to the three points of condemnation against Christ as three separate places, viz. before Caiaphas, Herod, and Pilate. It was from the last that he was led to that most violent and excruciating death. The three blows were given with the three tools, i.e. gauge, square, and gavel. These are symbols of the blow of the cheek of Christ, the flagellation and the blow with the spear, some substitute for the latter, but with less propriety, the crown of thorns. The brethren assembled around the grave of Haram Abib is a representation of the disciples laminating the death of Christ. The word, which was said to be lost, was pronounced upon the cross, which the Jews could not comprehend. The false brethren are represented by Judas, who proved false to his master, and the sprig of acacia represented the cross of which wood it is said to have been composed. Hiram Abib, the chief architect of King Solomon's temple, who was murdered by three ruffians during an unsuccessful attempt to force him to divulge the master's lost word. These three may be called thought, desire, and action. When purified and transmuted, they are three glorious avenues through which may manifest the great power of the three kings. The glowing builders of the cosmic lodge, manifesting in the world as spiritual thought, constructive emotion, and useful daily labor in the various places and positions where we find ourselves while carrying on the Master's work, these three form the flaming triangle, which glorifies every living mason, but when crystallized and perverted, they form a triangle prison, through which the light cannot shine and the life is forced to languish in the dim darkness of despair, until man himself through his higher understanding liberates the energies and powers which are indeed the builders and glorifiers of his father's house. When man can mold his thoughts, his emotions, and his actions into faithful expressions of his highest ideals, then liberty is his, for ignorance is the darkness of chaos, and knowledge is the light of cosmos. This rough, uncut ashlar has three dimensions, representative of the three ruffians who at this stage 
are destroyers of the fourth dimensional life concealed within the ugly, ill-shaped stone. The legend of Hiram, it is at high noon that he is stricken down and slain. The attack on Tipper Ett and John F. Kennedy is to be regarded as a reference to the fall death of Hiram at high noon, etc., etc. The rule of the ancient mysteries was and still is in other systems that twelve years of preparation should elapse before the last great spiritual experience was permitted that brought the candidate to the light at his center and qualified him for mastership. Though less sufficed in appropriate cases, as the result of his purification and labors, he had became an illuminate, and he was mystically said to be twelve years old. From a rough ashlar, he had become a polished perfect hue, a stone meant for the building into the holy city, which we are told layeth four square and his twelve gates that are always open. For all the parts of his organism were now equalized and balanced, and all his gates or channels of intercourse with the divine world no longer shut and clogged by the darkness of his former impurities, lay open for the passage through them of the true light. In masonry, this condition is called the hour of high twelve, and he who has attained it will be, like Haram Abib, in constant communication with and adoration of the Most High. Having been struck by Libra, being the state, Scorpio being the church, and Sagittarius being the mob, the sun, Chiram, is secretly home through the darkness of the signs of Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, and buried over the brow of a hill, or the vernal equinox. From the 14th degree, Perfect Elu Initiation, Senior Grand Warden, Jobert, Stoken, Terry, Morphy, Ali Cuber, Dorson, Hero, Behemar, Tito, Zerbal, Benachard, and Tabar. The first nine were those who were elected to search for the traitor, Jubalum, or Akira, one of the assassins of Haram Abed. Obed, the Hebrew word meaning serving one of nine favorite officials, selected by Solomon after the death of Haram Abed, taken from the 10th degree, Elu of the 15th initiation. Brother Jobert, in the legends of masonry, the greatest enemy of Hiram, or truth, is called Akira, or Jubilam. He had two companions, to whom various names have been given. You, Brother Jobert, have pursued and destroyed them all three. They represent, first, ignorance or darkness, second, superstition or error, third, egotism or ambition. In the legend or mythology of the Persians, they were Armin, or the evil principle attended by darkness and chaos. In the mysteries of the Egyptians, there were Typhon, the enemy and assassin of Osiris, assisted by Serapis and Amethyst. Among the Greeks they were Python and Chimera, many myths of the overthrow of the enemies of man and nature were invented. Now it is Jupiter, seconded by Apollo and Pan. Now it is foremost, aided by the Amphustans and Seeds. They all agree in fixing the period of the victory in the zodiacal sign of Capricornus, when the sun begins his ascension, and when nature resumes her work of annual reproduction. In the degree of elect of nine, of which you have passed, you have learned that Jabalam, or Akira, one of the ruffians, was killed in a cave, 
That skeleton in the east is a representation of him, with a sitting maul with which he was armed when he knocked down Harab Abib. His head Solomon had embalmed in order to be exposed until the other two were found. Six months after Akiro was killed, being a bee, one of Solomon's intendants, made inquiry in the country of Chet, tributary to Solomon. When he learned that Jubala, or Gibbs, and Jubalo, or Grayblot, the other two assassins, had retired there, thinking themselves safe. The names Jubala, Jubalo, and Jubalong. The French word Jubi means a rude screen. The screen in a medieval church, which stood at the entrance to the channel. The area east of the nave that included the choir. In those days, a large crucifix was mounted on the rude screen, so called because rude is an ancient Saxon word for cross. It was in front of this juby, this screen and crucifix, that the public penance sat by the priest was often carried out, rather than a typical current penance of a dozen Hail Marys. The medieval penance might be hours of prayer, or even a beating with bare knees on rough stone. More to the point, in religious orders, such as the Knights Templar, it was at the Jew B that the physical punishments or penances of monks and friars were affected, including the whipping prescribed by their rules. The Jew B was the site of public punishment of sin. This meaning lives today in the French colloquial term Venere a Jew B, literally to come to the Juby, which is defined as to submit, to get one's just deserts. It is in that sense of punishment and retribution that the word Juby lives on in Masonic ritual. To memorialize the fates of the three attackers of Haram Abib, who were duly punished for their crime and sin by the judgment of King Solomon, the originators of the allegory might have called them Juby 1, 2, and 3, but chose to differentiate by using the feminine, masculine, and neuter suffixes by naming them Jubala, Jubalo, and Jubalam. The collective term Juwees undoubtedly began as Jubees. With no English equivalent, the name of those who are punished point directly to a French-speaking order and to a medieval time frame. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.